Joined now by Vicki McKenna for CultureCast. Vicki, good to see you. Great to see you, Duke. This Ritter, Ritten, the Kyle Rittenhouse trial is, it's, if you're a conservative, if you're rooting for this kid, if you recognized right away that however much that kid may have been out of his element, he was victimized, not a victimizer. I mean, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't write a scenario like this with the prosecution falling apart, the judge standing his ground. Uh, everything seems to going this kid, be going this kid's way, despite the fact that the politician starting with Joe Biden, all the news media, all the culture, all the social justice warriors, all of that seems to be stacked against him. What do you make of this? You had Joe Biden calling him a white supremacist with zero evidence, including evidence um, that was attempted to be ascertained by the uh, the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, that left-wing hit mob of the Southern Poverty Law Center. Even they couldn't conjure up any evidence that Kyle Rittenhouse was a white supremacist, but Joe Biden said it anyway, and Maxine Waters said it anyway, and Elon Omar said it anyway, and for a year, a whole different narrative than what that, that that doesn't even come close to matching reality has been promoted by the mainstream media as well as the left wing media. Um, and if anybody's been watching this, it's extraordinary. It's like watching an episode, a really compelling episode, um, uh, you know, of, of a of a one of those uh, court shows, one of those lawyer shows, or maybe, maybe, you know, because it's so absurd how poorly the prosecution is, um, is doing here, maybe a really bad episode of one of those, uh, one of those court shows like Law and Order or something like that. But it is what, what everybody now sees is that nothing that is taking place in this trial matches anything that the narrative has promoted for the last year, the left-wing press and the mainstream press. The mainstream press is no better than the left-wing press. The mainstream press is the left-wing press. They are all about promoting narrative, not reality. And yes, it is going Kyle Rittenhouse's way because the prosecution doesn't have a case. Yeah, you remember that TV show L.A. Law from the 1980s? Good Lord. I, I mean, I could just see them framing it this way. But you know what happened with Hollywood TV? It looks like this kid is innocent. This kid has done nothing wrong. And then at the 11th hour, right before the jury comes back, there's some swastika dug up out of his bedroom drawer. <laughs> That's not going to happen here. But I think you, no. hit on the, you hit on the much broader implications of this. Uh, whatever happens as a trial, I mean, he may get a slap on the wrist. It may be a, a mistrial. It may be a complete exoneration. Nevertheless. Whatever happens is a tiny, tiny footnote to what this tells us about the culture. You've got not just the heavy hitters you mentioned. It's almost impossible to find a journalistic outlet that is telling the truth about what's going on here. Right. You mentioned you mentioned as it's going on. Yes, exactly. as it's going on, and they're still not telling the truth about what is happening. Um, and you know, this is this is a, this case matters for anybody who expects to be protected in their right of self-defense. That's why this case matters. This is this is classic self-defense. If you're someone like me and you've had a lot of self-defense training, you've had a lot of firearms training, you know, you have drilled, drilled, drilled on the law, what is reasonable, the expectations of reasonableness, all of it, it's textbook self-defense in this case. I, I mean, I can, I, can, I can walk you through the reasons why it is textbook self-defense, um, whether it's the Joseph Rosenbaum shooting or the Anthony Huber shooting or the Gage Grosskreutz shooting, textbook stuff here. If this kid goes down because the jury has been terrified into a guilty verdict on one of these self-defense claims, then the rest of us who expect protections for our right of self-defense um, are going to are, are going to be begging or we're going to be we're going to be left wanting for any kind of consistency or any kind of clarity in the law. And that's what scares me. You just mentioned a couple of days ago there was a, head, a headline to give us a sense of how the media spins even disastrous news for the prosecution. Tell that story. Um, the, the, it, this was just um, just a, a day or two ago, uh, and it was the Gage Grosskreutz testimony. Gage Grosskreutz has a long criminal record. He is somebody who is currently under charge for a felony burglary, I believe. He was in possession of a gun illegally, uh, and he was and he was somebody who was who was with Joseph Rosenbaum. He was wreaking havoc. He was a rioter. He was a violent rioter who brought a loaded illegal loaded gun to illegal loaded gun handgun to the Kenosha riots. He was described by a Madison news outlet as quote a protester and volunteer medic 
who testified he unintentionally pointed his gun at Kyle Rittenhouse. Stunning, absolutely stunning. And full disclosure, this is the same clown that tried to dox you dox you at one point. Yes, right? he did dox me. On the People's Revolution Facebook page, uh, you, can, you, you probably can't find this. I'm sure it's been deleted at this point. I have multiple screenshots of it, where Gage Crosskreutz, before the Kenosha riots, uh, doxed me because we were talking about the Jacob Blake shooting uh, on my radio program. And so my real name, my information uh, was put out on Facebook. And, and I actually reached out to my local law enforcement and said, listen, I need to make sure that you have a heads up on this because, um, you know, I, I, I don't want trouble. I don't I don't need someone trolling my home. It was concerning enough that I actually re reached out both to the county sheriff and to our local law enforcement chief. Amazing. After the break, let's talk more about the broader implications and what this means for American jurisprudence. Back again with Vicki McKenna for the second half of our Culture Cast. Vicki, I think we've uh, taken a good look at what's going on with the trial, but let's talk again a little bit more broadly about what does this mean? Are we, we really are entering a new phase of American culture broadly. It's not just uh, what's going on in the courts, what's going on in the media, but this seems to be a particular canary in a cave, right? A mine shaft, if you will. We've got before this for a whole year, before this ever came to court, how many Americans, how many even conservative Americans had a completely false picture painted for them of what happened in Kenosha, at what happened with Rick, uh, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse himself, what all these witnesses, who and what they were. I mean, you've got now a, a media, a tech uh, conglomerate, you've got the entire Democrat party, you've got academia and the social justice warriors, Hollywood now, all before any of the, before the first jurors have been picked convincing Americans that this is a open shut case, that this kid is a white supremacist, he's a Ku yep. Klux Klan, Klan member, he's a troublemaker, he, he, he wa as Maxine Water said, he came to Kenosha with an AR-15 with no other purpose but to shoot black people, and he's a white supremacist who's never and it's as all, far- it's all a lie, and, and it's and, all a lie. And, and not, not a single quote unquote black victim uh, of his shooting. So what does this mean then uh, with uh, regards so to the culture? Well, I will say this, number one, everything that everyone has said about this case is a lie. Everything, and, and they knew it was a lie, and I'll tell you why. There was so much video that was available. There was hours and hours of video. There were hundreds of different angles of video. You had the FBI withhold video evidence from the defense from a drone. It was flying over Kenosha. By the way, why was an FBI flying a drone plane over Kenosha with eight different cameras? And I mean, and what were they doing there? Not communicating with the Kenosha police, letting them know where the riots were taking place. But to your point about this, what does it mean generally for culture? It means that the, that the truth is relative. That's what it means because they have redefined this case as to be a white supremacist kid, totally not true, hunting down black people, totally not true. And if this jury acquits this kid, there is concern that Kenosha will burn again. The, the, the DA brings the charge. By the way, the elected DA is not trying this case. Thomas Binger, a, a, a lackey in the DA's office, is trying this case. This case is so bad. The biggest case in Kenosha history, criminal case probably in Kenosha history, and the elected DA doesn't want to plant his flag on this case because he knows it's a dog. But the, if, if the jury acquits the story says, because of how the truth has been made relative, that the jury acquits a white supremacist. What happens then? You bring BLM and Tifa, and Tifa, by the way, um, is launching has has been launching protests against this this trial going on to try to terrify the jury. The judge has already um, admonished. The, or, or warned uh, the jury and then admonished whoever might videotape the jury again, the jury is, is, you know, we're worried that they're going to be exposed. People are very much worried that their personal information will be doxxed on the internet. And if they acquit this kid, that, that there will be BLM and Antifa and other assorted different thug groups showing up at their homes. That, that's, my, that, that's the worry about what's going on with this new, uh, the truth is what my politics demands the truth has to be. You know, there was a case, Duke, in Nebraska of a guy named Jake Gardner, 
Uh, also somebody who was defending property as the as the BLM riots were tearing apart a neighborhood, his own dad's property. Uh, and he was put in a sleeper hole. He reaches for a gun. He points the gun backwards. He shoots the guy off of him. Classic self-defense. 60 days of protest on the front lawn of the district attorney. The district attorney hands off the case to a, quote, special prosecutor, by the way, a prosecutor who is elected by George Soros, ends up getting the guy charged. Um, that the destruction of his personal wealth, of his personal life, caused him to commit suicide. That's how unapologetic and committed to the politics the left is. They would they would rather see an, an innocent man convicted or an innocent man kill himself rather than actually just say, I'm sorry, we got it wrong. And these are the fruits of all this critical race theory, right? Yes. Where to be white is to be guilty. So it doesn't really matter in the, in the minds of these left wingers, whether or not Gardner or Rittenhouse had anything to do with this. They've right. got to pay a price for their whiteness. Whiteness is a disease that has to be stamped out. Even though they've killed nobody, they are murderers because of their whiteness. The, and the idea that critical race theory doesn't exist, hasn't exist, and hasn't influenced people, here you have your proof. Well, and, and think about this. The people who Kyle Rittenhouse defended himself against were white men, but they have now been transformed. They are, they, they, I guess they're white men plus or something <laughs> because I guess that's still proof he's a, you know, he's a white supremacist even though the people he defended himself against were white men. Yeah.